you open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 2. I'll give you a little bit of time to get there. Matthew chapter 2. And I had all intents and purpose to preach something else to you tonight. Um, I had already made up in my, my mind. I even asked uh, Ronnie if I could use some props. I was going to preach uh, something else completely tonight. I had my mind made up and... Sure enough, Brother Chris, when I got my mind made up is when the Lord said, my mind's not made up, your mind may be made up, but mine's not. And uh, me and Sierra were driving, I had the day off Monday, and me and Sierra were driving uh, to Cincinnati and we was listening to a a message that someone had sent us and he said a real in general comment um, about the birth of Jesus and it just sparked something in me. And uh, I looked at Sierra, and I I, I said, I, I got a message. I, I got I got to get my phone here. So I got my phone from Ava. She was watching Bluey on my phone and jotted it down real quick so I wouldn't uh, lose the thought. Um, so I, I just feel this on my heart so strongly tonight. And I will say it, it's kind of Christmassy, but it's kind of not. And... Uh, I'm not one that usually preaches themed messages, you know, when I say that, uh, geared for this, the holiday season. I, I just preach what the Lord tells me to preach. But Matthew chapter 2, it's a little different side of the Christmas story. We're going to begin in verse number 13. And just to give you a real quick backstory, Jesus is born, has been born. And we we read very in detail about that in Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 1, the the details of his birth, the details of his his holy conception. And we find here in Matthew chapter 2 that Jesus is born and that the the, uh, three wise men have, or the wise men have come um, to see him. So we, we, we pick this up in, in the first couple years of Jesus' life. It says in verse number 13, And when they were departed, talking about the wise men, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring the word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Turn to your neighbor and say, destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and, there, and, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, so just to tell you here, the wise men were told to come back to Herod and tell them where this baby was that they found, this this young child that they found. And the Bible says, and we'll read here, that they did not go to Herod, but they were warned in a dream not to go to him. And so Herod, when he saw that he was mocked by the wise men, was exceedingly wroth. Turn to your neighbor and say, he was mad. And he sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy or Jeremiah the prophet saying, and Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Let us pray tonight. God, we come before you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for its anointing. God, we thank you for the worship that we experience in this house. And God, we ask that your word go forth tonight and impact hearts and lives. And Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And the church says, amen. A very, um, you may be thinking, a very interesting text for the Christmas story. But yet, 
It is a part of the Christmas story. It is a part of Jesus coming to this earth. We know, uh, and I pray you know, that that Jesus came under miraculous circumstances. And we celebrate that this time of year. We celebrate Christmas, Christ Mass, the Christ, keeping the Christ in Christmas, as we've heard for years and years. But I, I want you to know that we this is a time where we think uh, uh, about being jolly. This is a time we think about being joyful, and we should. We absolutely should be grateful. We should be thankful. We should be joyous. Uh, we should be excited and, and, and full of gratitude for the fact that Jesus came. And, and, and that can preach in itself that Jesus was in heaven and he, he, he was in a perfect place and he chose to come and to lay down his life so that you and I could live not only in heaven one day, but could live an abundant life here on this earth. That's amazing in itself. This is a time of year where we decorate, as you see. It's a time of year that we make efforts to give gifts because we were given a gift. And the Bible tells us about that gift in John chapter 3, where it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believeth in him would not perish but would have everlasting life we give gifts because we were given a gift and i thank god for this season this time that we find ourselves in every year on the calendar but we read in this passage of scripture a part of the christmas story that is not preached very often and and why it's not preached very often is because it's it's difficult to talk about what had happened and and but but at the same time we can say well we see that God provided a way out a, a way of protection for his son just like like we we think he should like we think he would but what i want you to understand is there is a side of the christmas story that is not discussed uh, very often. And, and this is the fact of that Christmas story is that for Mary and Joseph uh, and Jesus, this was a very difficult time. Hear me. Hear me, this was a very difficult time. We can talk about the fact that Mary, being a young teenage woman, was betrothed to Joseph. Uh, and then out of nowhere shows up uh, coming back from Elizabeth, visiting her cousin, and comes back pregnant. That was a, a, a shameful in their day. And the Bible even says uh, that more or less that Joseph uh, could put her away quietly. What that means is he could break off the engagement and, and, and pretty much divorce her and say, you know, go your way. Just live in shame the rest of your life. He could have disregarded her. He could have done all these things. But out of nowhere, Joseph comes back and he says, no, uh, I, I, I love her. I, I, will, I will be with her. God has a plan for her. So, so not not only is, is Mary in a difficult time, now Joseph is in a difficult time. Uh, do you realize that this, this was such a sin to the Jewish people that they could be denied the selling uh, or the buying of goods? Uh, that, that Joseph, being a carpenter, this could, affected his, this could have affected his business. Uh, this could have affected their ability to even eat. Uh, and not only this, uh, but how many, how many has, has, has a father? Uh, has, has a wife that's ever been pregnant. How would you like to take your pregnant wife, put her on a donkey, and, and, and just drag her along for about a, a 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 miles? That's very uncomfortable for her, and that, that is a very difficult situation. And then the fact uh, that she had no midwife, no one to help her uh, when the baby was coming. She, he, and they didn't even have a room. Uh, we, 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 we hear all this stuff, uh, but we don't, we, we don't really realize how difficult of a situation uh, that Mary and Joseph find themselves in. Uh, so you think, okay, Jesus is born. Everything's okay. The shepherds show up. A uh, few years later, the wise men show up. Uh, everything's hunky-dory. This is great. We're out of the woods. Uh, but then the Lord comes to Joseph uh, and he says, listen, you're not out of this yet. You need to save your family. Uh, you need to save your son, save uh, uh, your wife, and you need to flee the country. This is a difficult time for them. You, you tracking with me tonight? Very difficult time. But I, I want you to understand something about this text tonight. We find uh, that 
when the wise men do not return back to Herod, he is so angry because he wanted to know where this king was. How many know the wise men, they went to Herod and they said, have you not seen the star? Do you not know about the king that's going to be born? And he acts clueless about it. But he hears that the child is going to be born in Bethlehem. And he says, when you find that child, you come back to me so I can praise and I can worship him. But what he really wanted to do, as we see in this portion of scripture, was to destroy him, was to eliminate him. And, and you may be asking yourself, where is he going with all this? I, I, will, I will get this plane off the ground, I promise you. But hear me tonight. What is going on is, is Herod is so aggravated because he is so jealous that there's this king, this foretold king, this prophesied king that, that has come to this earth. He's going to eliminate him. But I want you to know that this same, this same, this same story, this same principle, Herod was not just being driven by his own fleshly desires and his own fleshly greed and jealousy, but I want you to know that this is a a spiritual thing uh, that the enemy knew uh, that if Jesus came to earth uh, if Jesus uh, ministered on earth, uh, if Jesus goes to a cross, uh, if Jesus rises from the dead uh, then his grip on death and hell uh, would be loosened uh, by the savior of the world Uh, so Herod is being driven here uh, not only in his flesh and his jealousy and his only earthly desires uh, but he's being driven by Satan himself Uh, but I want you to know that this is not uncommon. This is seen in in Moses' life when Pharaoh wanted to eliminate an entire generation, to eliminate an entire group of people. Again, inspired not only by his own jealousy, not only by his own own ambitions, but by a spirit. We see in this nation until recently that we aborted more babies. We, 20 million million babies in 2019 worldwide were aborted that the enemy is still after a generation but let me ask you this why does the enemy come after a generation you may say, well, well, because God's got plans for them God's got purposes listen, I, I, I want you to notice with me the Bible tells us that Herod makes a decree Because he hears that this savior, that this king, that this deliverer has come. He makes a decree. He says, listen, if there is one deliverer in the generation and I don't know where he's at, I will kill the entire generation to get rid of one deliverer. In Moses' day, they would kill because the people began to grow stronger and stronger. The Israelite people began to grow stronger and stronger. What Pharaoh decided is, I will kill an entire generation so that one one deliverer won't rise up out of them. Hear me tonight. I know that we live in, in, a, in a difficult times, but we live in times that the enemy is still after our children and our young people. I know that's not news to you. I know we preach about that a lot. But I want you to understand the magnitude of it. That we have been aborting babies. We have been eliminating generations for years. But not only this. I heard today. I was listening to some news. And up in Canada just north of our borders. They have started what they call a MAID program. M-A-I-D. What that is is a medically assisted in death. We're going to help you kill yourself. It is legal and last year alone, just what they recorded, they, 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 asked, they, they even found out that doctors were falsifying records so the numbers wouldn't look as high. But the records that they have on file, over 10,000 people were medically assisted in their death, in their suicide. It could be as easy as I have chronic knee pain. I want to die. 
They went, They said, okay, you want to die today? We'll help you die today. There's no wait. You don't have to wait 10 days. You don't have to wait a month. You don't have to tell your family. You don't have to consult with a psychiatrist or a doctor or any professional. If you want to die, you have chronic pain. You have chronic depression. You're stressed out. You're anxious. We'll help you kill yourself. You say, oh man, this world's gone crazy. These people are crazy. Listen to me. It is not just people acting crazy, but there is a demonic presence that has come over this world so strongly. And Jesus promised us that it would. He said, listen, it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse. But here's what I'm here to tell you tonight, that the church will get better, will get stronger, will get more anointed. Why? Because you see the enemy bombarding this generation, coming to steal, coming to kill, coming to destroy. But here's what I want you to know, that there's deliverers in this generation. There are people, I'm not saying your children are Jesus, don't get me wrong, but I'm saying your children have the same spirit that raised Jesus up from the dead. Your children have an anointing on their life. Your young adult has an anointing on their life. Not just to step into a school, not just to step into a workplace, but to step in and give deliverance, give peace, give hope, not in themselves, but through the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hear me tonight. The enemy is on a generational search. He's looking, Justin. He's looking. Peter describes him as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Pharaoh, Herod, they were willing to wipe out an entire generation to eliminate one deliverer. Isn't that insane? They're looking for one person, but they're willing to kill them all. Church, I want you to know that the same plan that was afoot during Jesus' birth is the same plan that is afoot in this nation and in this world today. They seek these young people. Why? Because I believe these young people will see things that Jesus uh, said and done on his, in his, on his time, in his time on earth. Uh, I believe uh, that there are young people in this generation uh, that will walk into political leaders like Moses did. Uh, and Moses saying, I ain't nobody, uh, I'm nobody important, uh, but I have a call and an anointing on my life uh, and can walk in uh, and say, let my people uh, go. Uh, give God his people. Uh, give God what is this. Give God what belongs to him. Listen to me tonight church. Hell may come after you but I want you to know the reason that hell is coming after you is because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want you to know the enemy may come and try to divide but it's not time for us to be divided. It's time for us to be unified and say you know what I may not like you but I love you. I may not like everything you do, but I love you. And love will conquer all. Why? Because there is no fear in love. I'm not afraid to love the church. I'm not afraid to love this community. And if I'm not afraid to love it, I know that God's power will work through my life, will work through your life. I'm telling you, the enemy is searching to eliminate a generation, to get rid of a deliverer. But there are people under the sound of my voice tonight. You don't even, you can't even fathom the call, the anointing, the gifts that God has for you. But what we're going to do tonight when we come to these altars is we're going to say, here am I, Lord. Send me. I'll be who you want me to be. I'll preach what you want me to preach. I'll sing what you want me to sing. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll be who you want me to be. I'll do what you call me. Listen, I'll tell you what. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. I want you to understand this that there is deliverers in this house, uh, that there are people uh, that are full of the Spirit uh, and you're about to walk in the Spirit. Uh, You're about to live in the Spirit. Uh, A Spirit of anointing uh, that when you walk into a room, uh, that yokes begin to break, uh, that chains begin to fall off, uh, that the atmosphere changes. Uh, Oh, you better praise the Lord with me tonight. Uh, I want you to hear this, uh, that God uh, is wanting to do something great. In this time and generation, 
they'll come to the music. Hear me. Lord began to tell me last night, me and TJ were here. And man, it's just, it's like as soon as we walked in the door, you just feel the presence of the Lord. And it ain't that way all the time. But last night, man, such a freedom. I saw, man, TJ just burned this aisle up, man. That boy walks faster than anybody I've ever seen in my life. But you know what? I was excited. I was worshiping. I had a glimpse over at him. And man, he was just, he didn't know what to do with himself, bro, Chris. He was just, he was feeling the presence of the Lord. I was here last night. The Lord began to say, listen, I'm raising up deliverers. I'm raising up deliverers. You say, well, I can't deliver. No, 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 no. That, that, don't mistake me. It's Christ in you. Is the hope of glory. It's what Colossians says. That Christ in you is the hope of glory. You've heard me talk about it before. What is glory? Glory is the manifestation of God's presence. So it's Christ in you is the promise of a mess uh, of, uh, of manifestation of God's pre- of His presence. Sorry. So I'm gonna raise up deliverers. I'm going to raise up standard bearers. But hear me tonight. You know what saved Jesus' life? I got to come down here for this. You know what saved Jesus' life? Spiritually sensitive parents. Listen, I'm not a perfect parent. I don't think any of us would say that we are. I'm not a perfect parent. I make mistakes. God's still working on me. You escaped, didn't you? Spiritually sensitive parents. So what does that mean? Read, read, read your Bible. What happened to Joseph? It's Joseph. He had a dream. How many times have you had a dream and said, oh, it was just a dream? You better be careful. Because I don't know about you, but my Bible says that that's, that can be a sign of the last days. People's going to have visions. People's going to dream dreams. And Joseph had a dream. And instead of shaking it off, he got up. He said, honey, how many, how many men has ever woke up your wife in the middle of the night? It is not a pleasant experience. Honey, what? What do you want? We've got to go. Go? What do you mean we got to go? Trust me, honey, we got to go. They got up and they left. And it saved a deliverer's life. Moses, his mother. She didn't know what to do. But you know what she did? She got a basket, put pitch in it. And she surrendered her child to the river. What's what's Jesus say about the river? In John chapter 7, he says that the Holy Spirit would be like rivers of living water. She surrendered him to the Holy Spirit. She gave him up to God. Spiritually sensitive parents saved a deliverer's life. And I'll take it even a step further. He's getting heavier. Specifically, and, and, and mothers don't take this wrong. We all have a role to play. But spiritual fathers. I 
You know, we talk about Mary. Mary had to have great faith, and the Bible says she had great faith. I believe that. I'm not trying to compare. Don't, don't get me wrong. But the Bible says that when Mary conceived, Joseph was like, Ugh, I don't know about this. He's going to put her away peacefully because he cared about her. I believe he truly cared about her. Didn't want her to die because he could have her stoned. But the Lord spoke to him and said, listen, you go with her. You do this thing with her. The Bible never says that he questioned. He did it. We read here in our text, the Lord come to him in a dream. He said, you got to go. And you know what? He went. But not only this, the Bible says when he was coming back with Jesus from Egypt after Herod's death, he was going to journey through Jerusalem to get to Galilee. Galilee's on the north end of Israel. And the Bible says that the Lord came to him in a dream. And he said, you know what? We're going to bypass Jerusalem. We're not going to go through Jerusalem. Again and again, Joseph, listening to the Lord, protected, led, and guided his family so that a Savior could come. You read our, you read our text tonight. Herod wanted to destroy him. And hear me tonight, the devil would love nothing more than to destroy the people of God. But the devil cannot destroy what God has protected. And listen, fathers and mothers, God has given you stewardship to protect your children. Sensitive, spiritually sensitive parents saved his life. Stand with me tonight. I know it's easy to look at our, our lives and, and think that we're insignificant. How many's ever felt unworthy? How many still struggles with feeling unworthy? But you know what? The fact that you feel unworthy is, tells me that sh there's humility in you. And the Bible says in James chapter 4, those who humble themselves before the Lord, those are the ones he elevates. Those are the ones he lifts up. The people that don't feel like I can. And you may be here tonight and you may say, I, I can't do it. I, God, I know that you have a plan for my life, but I can't do it. I've, uh, this needs to happen. That needs to happen. And, and we go through, we all, we're human. We go through all the scenarios. I need this. I, God, I need like uh, eight people to come and confirm this to me. I need like 27 prophets and 27 prophetesses and seven pastors. And how, listen, how, how many people got to come to you and tell you that God's got something for you to do? It's in your Bible. Lord, have mercy. But you may feel like, how can God use me to do anything? I want you to, I want you to know this. This is how God can use you to do anything. Moses said, I have nothing but a staff. I have nothing. God said, what's in your hand? He said, a staff. He said, I can use that. If you're willing to be used, I can use that. And, 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 and Moses just went. Moses just went after what God had for him. He, he didn't know what the future held. Justin, he didn't know what it held. He just stepped out in faith. And God met him there. But you want to know what God met him there with? Anointing. Because God knows we can't do it in our flesh. Our flesh accomplishes nothing. The Bible says our flesh and our righteousness is as filthy rags. We can do nothing. But by his spirit, not by mind, not by power, but by his spirit, says the Lord, 
you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. That's what the word of God says. And hear me tonight. This is how powerful the anointing is. When you're weak and you feel like, I'll just use myself as an example. I don't, I don't, there's times I don't feel like I can sing. I don't feel like I can preach. I'm just wore out. I'm spiritually, physically exhausted. You know, that thing, that those things happen. We're human. But somehow, the Lord just helps. He just helps. And it's His anointing. It's His Spirit. And I want to tell you this, and this is what we're going to end with. I know she's distracting. I know she's cute. But I want you to hear this. The Bible, pastor preached on a couple weeks ago. The Bible tells us of a story of a widowed woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. Whose sons were about to go into slavery, right? We, remember pastor preached on that a few weeks ago. And, and the prophet of God said, listen, go into your house. Because he asked her what she had. She said, all I have is a little bit of oil. Symbolic of the anointing. You all, most of you all know this. He said, go in, shut the door. And just get all the vessels you can. Go in, shut the door, and begin to pour out. She's getting discontented, mama. He said, shut the door. Get all the vessels you can. Shut the door. Begin to pour out. The Bible says she filled up every vessel she had. He said, sell it, pay off the debt, keep the rest, live off the rest. Know that. Here's the thing about that story. The Bible never says they run out of oil. They ran out of vessels. You say, what does that mean? There is not, you know, we live through COVID and there's shortage of toilet paper, shortage of this, shortage of that. You know, we, we live through all that. There's not a shortage of God's anointing. He's limitless. What there's a shortage of is vessels. She did not run out of it. She didn't run out of anointing, Justin. She didn't run out of the power that God had given her. She ran out of vessels to pour it into. And I want you to know that's, that's the situation heaven's in right now. I have all the anointing that, that, that you could ever need, says the Lord. He, 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 he is limitless. But what he's looking for is a vessel. Paul says, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the vessel. I need something that I can pour into. Because if he pours into you, it will pour out of you. So I'm going to call us to a place of prayer tonight. Because I believe that the enemy can, can, can search this generation all he wants to. He can try to steal, kill, and destroy. But I want you to know that the gates of hell will not prevail against God's church. And we're going to rise up. And we're going to be who God's telling us to be. And calling us to be. And we're not going to wait for 20,000 tomorrows. We're going to do it today. We're going to do it tomorrow. We're going to do it Friday. We're going to do it Saturday. We're going to do it Sunday. We're going to live in, in the call that God has for us. If you say, I know I'm called, but I don't know what I'm called to, do something. We're all called to be evangelists. We're all called to pray. We're all called to read the Word of God. But I want you to come to this altar tonight. If you're wanting to surrender, you're wanting a refreshing, you're wanting a restoration to come over you, I want you to just hear the words of this text tonight. The enemy came to destroy. But God preserved, protected, and when Jesus came back, at 12 years old, they found him in the temple, and he was astounding the Pharisees and the scribes. God wants to use you to astound those around you. Not by, who look at you. No, but by the anointing that God wants to place on your life. Hey everyone, it's Pastor Jade Abrams here. I want to thank you for watching today. Please feel free to like and subscribe or find us on our other social media platforms. And we pray God's blessings your way. You have a great day. We'll see you next time.